that movie. What you're watching now was considered an impossible scene to shoot at one time in cinematography. Chao Chi! But thanks to the steady cam, movie makers and cinematographer can now have their camera fluidly follow the actors and actresses throughout the scene oh without complicated dolly setup. Considered to be an icon by many movie makers and cinematographers, an Oscar and Emmy Award winner, the inventor of the steady cam, I'm proud to bring you Garrett Brown. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Andrew. Good to be here. It's our pleasure. Thanks. Garrett, how does it feel like to have your invention practically used in every part of every movie making there is in the world now? Well, it, of course it's a surprise, but it's a slow surprise. It took 35 years. <laughs> you know. It's one of those surprises that sneaks up on you, and it's a very pleasant surprise, obviously. Right? And it's weird, I mean, some of the best aspects of it are we, we could almost go anywhere in the world and somebody would buy us a dinner that we know or, you know, taught or something like that. When you started this, did you expect this to be an industry-changing device? Well, strangely, I had an earlier model that was not nearly as good. But I was so excited by that model, I had a dream one night about getting an Oscar. I'm embarrassed to say this, but... And I got this was very before or uh, after before you camp, get the Oscar. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got so excited about it. And then when the real thing came along, I was never able to quite get that excited until it started to go. You know, once it started to go, it was fun. Really but I fun. guess that's what they mean. Success doesn't come overnight. Next thing you know, you're successful. Is, is that what it is? Well, is no, that how it felt? If you watch overnight successes, sometimes they're a disappointment later. This is great. I mean, it's been growing. It's more and more all the time, you know? And I think it's, you know, it's an honest thing, you know? It's a good thing, so I, I like it a lot. I still remember the footage that you filmed of your wife running up the stairs ah. of the Rocky show. Yeah. I'm just curious, ever since then, how much has Steadicam progressed and changed over the decades? Well, actually, the, the principles behind it are the same, but the original shot that I made was before video assist. So I had a fiber optic viewfinder right. on my head. A, an amazing object, actually. Uh, not very practical, very expensive, and you know, if you sat on it, it's dead, you know. Yes. We made a, a demo that had 30 impossible shots, right? Because I had to show somebody in Hollywood what this could do. And the great thing about it is you can show that it works without showing how it works. Well, the guy who was about to direct Rocky saw that demo and found us and said, you know, how did you do that and where are those stairs and so on and so on. And now the stairs have become a, a icon tourist. if you go oh to. Oh my God, yeah. it's huge. I mean, people show up and run up and down those stairs. It's amazing. And then they got to stop yeah. up there and yeah. do this, right? Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. your trip to Philadelphia is just not complete, isn't it? I know, it's it? the second biggest tourist. So in the background, we're doing our final test for the workshop here. So you may see a study cam running by in the background. And I may have to run over and do my part, which is I'm, I'm selling, I'm shooting the uh, test with a little, uh, little study cam. So the students can see how And this they is look. the Merlin. This is the Merlin, yeah. In fact, this is the new you model just, of the Merlin. You just got stabilization into the home, Garrett. Well, this is, I really love this amazing. thing now. You could put these, you know, you on an put iPhone. these high def cameras on this now. You know, so this is pretty good. But I'm shooting the, the guys as they do their tests so they can see their body language, what they look like, and they can compare what they shot with what they did physically, you know. So, so would you say, answering the question earlier, that your product has since then gotten lighter, slimmer, and also more tailored toward home users? Would you say well, that way? Well, we did a model, this one, for the home. I, the, the professional product starts with a big, huge. humongous one, you know, for uh, nowadays 3D cameras, some of which weigh 30 kilos, you know. Um, but you know, it is a wonderful thing for me because there are these lighter and lighter ones as the cameras get lighter. You know, this is a great little camera. Right. and. That camera actually would go on this one, you know. Exactly. And you no longer need the arm and all that business if you if you can put the camera up on something this right. size. And if you know what you're doing, it's as good as the big one, you know. So that's a charming development, you know. Uh, 
as I get more and more ancient and the uh, study cams get lighter, I can still keep doing this. So it's great. Now here's one important thing that we'd love to know because over the decades since the first time you invented this, the post editing your video is now very stable. You can have just click on a button and mm. it stabilizes itself. Camera has gotten lighter. The optics has got built-in image stabilization. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your product? What all those things are doing are removing vibration, right? Right. Uh, vibration is a problem with handheld, right? But what we've found is uh, the stabilizers don't do a thing for your large-scale Exactly. Moves. But you know what we found? The study cam is stabilizer is its second function. The thing that has turned out to be the most important is it's a really elegant way to hold an object. Your camera. You know, if you're handheld, you still, you know, you can't make these fluid, wonderful moves that look like French curves. So here is an object that a couple of fingers can move it, and you just simply cannot do that handheld, you know? Right. I'll just give you one example, close up for your audience. Just watch this, because when I grew up in the movie business, making a move like this, just a panning move, right? Involved a, a wheeled head and a lot of skill. Right. And now these things pan a finer, what we call panning shot. Right. Than you could possibly make, you know, with any machine that exists. And that's that's a means of holding something that, you know, I. We and used how to, many products that you have in the family now? How many models that you have in oh, the family? I think there's probably ten or eleven that are working our sizes up. You know, we used to worry about the black box stabilizers. When I did this in 35 years ago, I thought, oh, this has got five years and then there'll be a box that does this. Well, we're still waiting for a box that blows this away because of that holding phenomenon. You have people copying your product because it's doing so well. What is your take on that? Well, it, it was a surprise when it first happened because, you know, when you get a patent, it goes for 18 years. I was young. I thought, ah, I'll be old when it runs out. Well, it ran out in 1994, and I, I was still alive. And I thought, oh my god. <laughs> and, and here we course, are still, yeah. Yeah, and immediately there were copies. But of course, they're copying the 1977 machine. You got there are point 40 there. copies in the world right now, which is amazing to me. I, I'm sort of flattered by it. But, uh, of course, we kept patenting new things. You know, the study cam has, I think now, So when you're mentioning new patents. Wow. 12, 15 patents for new things that the guys can't copy yet. So, I mean, we still think we're out there ahead of things. Right. Uh, Example, the Tango. Yeah, that maybe, was launched uh, maybe in you can get a shot right? of the Tango. They're using it downstairs. Yeah. That, that is still under patent, right? Well, all the, all the 12 new things are, right. the, you know. So we're still, I think we're still ahead of the, of the pack. You know, but it's very funny to me because some, some of the copies are, uh, frankly, you know, not terrific. Right. Uh, which amazes me. If you're going to copy something, at least you could copy it well, you know. Right. But one of the things that probably might worry you is that the cost. You know, there are a lot of competitors coming out saying that you know, it's cheaper now. Does yeah. it worry you? Well, no, I think you get what you pay for. Oddly enough, uh, even in China, which is a, a difficult market to crack, I think there are five Chinese copies. Uh, I, I won't comment on the quality, but uh, even the Chinese now are getting very brand conscious. They're, they are buying actual Rolexes, not just knockoffs, you know. Right. Uh, the market is more prosperous there, and, and they want the real thing. We're going to teach in Beijing probably next year, you know, because there's tremendous demand in China for study camp, which is amazing to me. You mentioned about teaching classes. And in the midst of a class now, that's why you're running yeah. up and down yeah, in, yeah, during yeah. the interview. It's, it's fun, I like it. What do you do now, Garrett? Well, I, I did a, uh, a lot of films. I did uh, nearly 100 films. Wow. And I love to shoot. I mean, e even shooting a shot in a workshop is fun because this thing is sort of an, an arty and athletic thing at once. You know, you're doing something highly intensely athletic and very delicate at the same time. A friend of mine joked, it's like moving a piano and playing at the same time. You know? <laughs> uh, but 
After a hundred movies, I, I, I have completely had enough of riding in vans and being told when to eat and so on. The peripherals, I, I, I'm done with. So this is great for me. I love teaching uh, and I, I love the connection that I have with future operators and so on. I mean, for example, the guy, and, and, and we try to teach, you know, not just the mechanics of study cam and the, you know, the physical move, which by itself is like a ballet, as you see, but also all the trip tricks, you know, 30 years of tips, you know, how do you, how do you navigate a set? How do you know where you are, you know? How do you handle yourself? And then we try to teach the politics of this job. Right. You know, for example, just a quickie little thing just happened. This guy did a, a beautiful shot, and at the end of it, he went, oh, you know, no, if you're shooting, you, you have what we call the look on your face, you know, the look is, a look of, you know, contentment. contention. Yeah. Yeah. I pulled it off. Yeah. Be, you know, because the director might like your shot, you know. Don't telegraph to him that you hate it, you know. Right. I mean, little stuff like that. Right. Not obvious, necessarily, so. That explains why the Steadicam Go workshop that you're conducting now in Kuala Lumpur is like, what, six day? You know, if you wanted to learn the violin, you would at least have a six day workshop, right? For the Agreed. <laughs> That's just the violin. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, this, this is, uh, there's a lot to it after 35 years. The machine itself is, I have to admit, it, an invention that barely does anything, it barely works. It allows a gifted human being to impersonate a dolly, you know, to make a shot that's mechanically smooth. It isolates all your moves from this thing the that's body. flowing along, you know. And if you look at somebody who's good, it, it, uh, even now, every now and then, I look at it with new eyes and I go, wow, you know, did I do that? Did you I know? do that? You know, because it's a very weird invention. It shouldn't, it shouldn't work, you know. When credits roll these days, at yeah. the end of the movie, you see one distinctive name that's called the Steadicam Operator. Yeah. And it's still our trademark, by the way. I just want to point that out. <laughs> Don't be using that name for anything. It's not a noun, it's a not real a verb. <laughs> There's a little R in there right at the end of it, you know what I mean? So yeah. talking about that, Garrett, you talked about filming a hundred over movies. You have done Rocky, you have done Indiana Jones. Mm. Tell us, is there any movie or any scenes that you would have done differently talking about it? The shot, the very iconic shot in Rocky running up the steps. Mm -hmm. For 35 years, I've looked at that shot, which is, you know, a great shot. But at the top of it, there's a little roll like this, right? And the unknown backstory is that somebody bumped my camera. Really? Uh, it was bent a little bit, the, the motor shaft. You, know, you don't want to hear the details, but the point was it wouldn't run in the cold. And it was a very cold morning. And I had to send a guy out for a six volt car battery and a, and a 12 volt car battery because it wanted 18 volts. And so I had the director of photography running up the steps after holding me, the battery. holding the batteries with a cable between me and the thing, right. and he couldn't keep up with me and Stallone. And at the very moment, at the best moment in that shot, coming around, the cable comes taut, he's almost falling down, right? right. And the camera goes like this. Right. Right. And we had to move on, you know, I had to, you know. And you didn't I, want to cut it? Well, I couldn't, I, they, uh, I wasn't even at the time aware of how bad it was. Right. Now I go to see Rocky, you know, and this huge shot has this one small thing wrong with it. So, yeah, all right. This if I could, say, if well, I could shoot I... one over again, I would... That would be the one? Well, I'd go back and I would pick somebody faster to carry the batteries. Right. You know. <laughs> but there you are, you know. I bet did they say, did you get a good take and what do you do? We tell, the, we tell the class there are only two good answers to that question. If somebody says, how was it? If you're perfectly happy to see it on the Late Show for the next 20 years like this, you don't, you don't boast, you don't brag, you say, it was good, I liked it. Because you know? they may have some other reason they don't like it. If there was something wrong, for God's sake, don't go, oh, I didn't like it, or, oh, it wasn't very good. You know what's even better now, Garrett? I'm gonna go back and watch Rocky again and really fast forward to that scene and see where the bump is. That's oh, I, I was afraid of that. <laughs> so what you tell them, you, if they ask you that question, you say, the very best you can, thing you can say is, this is going to be very good. Let's fix this such and such. Let's right. do it again. Because what you want is another take. So politically, 
we try to help these guys with that answer. If you give the wrong answer, you know, production doesn't know what to do. You know, so. you don't have to say that you bumped the camera. You can well, say no, that that I was mean, a good take. No Let's matter, do another one. Yeah. No, if you don't tell it was a good take, if it isn't, you say this can be good. That expresses your enthusiasm for it. You don't shake your head. Right. You don't Body blame language. Your, you don't blame yourself. You just say, "Let's do it again. This can be really good." You know. This looks kind of fun, really. It is fun. It's a, the most fun you can have, and still get paid for. Always it. have a steady cam operator, but I've never really have a chance to like run around with it. Can Would I you try like to try it? Can I try it? Put Andrew in a rig and give him give him two cameras. We have sizes. Uh, Brett, come back downstairs. The Zephyr. Position? Right. Okay, that means your facing forward is still as facing in the same direction. We well, have a torch. I go like this. Baron! This is the man himself. He was supposed to be the first cameraman shooting the interview, but he's also... I've got something to say about the class. Because we get up before the sun rises. Uh, what's good about the instructors here is they can spot. Very really important because body posture, you, you could be a, little, a, a few inches off you. At the end of the day, during lecture, the instructor... Having you here. Thanks, Andrew. Go to class now. Oh, don't push. <laughs> Which is the missionary, Andy, missionary. Don Juan. Well, you can be forward or backward. Right, so... The missionary. Run! Look like this. <laughs> That's... Feel. <laughs> Hello, Brett. Give him uh, two cameras. Andrew? Sure, I'll ask him. Hey, Andrew. That was Garrett. He wants you to put on two rigs now. Two? Two cameras. I better go and get another camera. You better? Yeah. Quick. You guys are kidding me. What, two cameras? Yeah, that's your job. Oh, yeah. Stereo. This is where I run.